Hi, I'm Teacher Emmy, and I'm really excited that you're here. We're going to be reading a story together called It Began With a Page, How Gyo Fujikawa Drew the Way by Kyo McClear. And we're gonna also do an art activity at the end of the story. I wanted to say a little bit about myself. I'm a mom, my child is four years old, and I'm also a teacher. Um, I'm part of Tsuda for Solidarity and Japanese Americans for Justice, and I'm really curious about who you are. So I would love to hear your names. Didn't quite hear, could you say it a little louder? Oh, I heard that time, thank you. You have an amazing name, and I'm really excited to meet you. So thank you for being here. Show me on your fingers how old you are. I'm seeing some fives, some fours. Oh, I saw an eight. Okay, so we have a nice range of ages, which is really exciting. So this book that we're gonna read, it began with a page, is a true story about a real person. When we read books that are true stories about real people, written by someone else, what is that called? I heard the answer, biography. This is a biography. So the person who wrote this story is Kyo McClear. And I think it's pretty cool that her name is sort of close to Gyo. Kyo and Gyo. And the other really awesome thing about this book is that it has a timeline and some photographs of Gyo Fujikawa. So I want you to know that this is a book about a real person and that this is a book about real events that happened a long time ago. So here's a photo of Gyo when she was a baby and she's so cute, those cheeks. And there she is as a little kid and that's her sibling. And that is her mother who's with them. Um, but she was born in 1908 in Berkeley, California. And maybe some of you are in Berkeley, California, or you've been to Berkeley, California. I'm seeing some heads nodding. All right. So she was born in Berkeley, California before a big war called World War II. Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of World War II. And so I'm seeing a lot of thumbs. Oh. And I'm already hearing people shouting out the names of some of the countries that were fighting against each other. So yes, Japan and the United States were at war during World War II. Uh, when the war was happening, Gyo was actually a young adult. And here's a picture of her. She was working for Disney. Um, here she is painting a mural. And she was on the East Coast. And so, uh, she was far away from her family, but her family was still in California and they were forced to leave their home. They only had 48 hours. Can you show me on your fingers how many days 48 hours is? Yeah, two days. They had two days to get to uh, or make arrangements for their belongings, to figure out what to do with their home, um, and pack the things that they thought they would need and they didn't really know where they were being taken um, So they were forced to move and the first place they were forced to live was in a Santa Anita Park racetrack Which is a racetrack for horses and where do horses sleep? I heard horse stalls so Gyo Gyo's family, not Gyo because she was in the East Coast, Gyo's family was forced to live in these horse stalls, um, which as you can imagine was very, very difficult and uncomfortable and smelly and just very, very harsh condition to live in. And then after that, they were forced to move to a prison camp in Jerome, Arkansas and they had to stay there for several years in this prison camp. So, um, Yo's family was forced to be in these prison camps along with a hundred, over 120,000 Japanese heritage people 
um, from the United States and also from some Latin American countries because of racism. So give me a thumbs up if you've heard this word before and I'm seeing some thumbs and this is an important word for you to know. So racism is when individual people in positions of power or privilege or even the government treats people unfairly because of their heritage, how they look, or where their ancestors come from. So the U.S. government treated Japanese heritage people in a racist way and unfairly forced and imprisoned 120,000 Japanese American, Japanese heritage people from the United States and Latin American countries into these prison camps during World War II. When I think about this time in history, it really hurts my heart. And so I'm gonna invite you to put your hands on your heart if you feel comfortable, take a breath in, take a breath out, and just honor whatever you're feeling right now and just feel that feeling. Um, but you know, even though Gyo was not imprisoned, it was very, very difficult for her to be separated from her family. And she was an artist. And you can get a hint of that from this title, how Gyo Fujikawa drew the way. So she used art to express her feelings. And I want you to take your imaginary paintbrush and paint the air if you also love making art. All right, I love making art too. And I especially love making art with my four-year-old kid. So we make a lot of art together. And so Gyo used her art to draw and imagine the world she wanted to live in because there were injustices and unfair things happening in the world around her and unfair injustices that happened to her own family. So I'm gonna read the story aloud and we'll chat as I'm reading, but before we do that, I'm gonna invite you to take some stretches because sitting for a long time can sometimes get uncomfortable. Um, if you don't wanna stretch, that's okay. Um, if you wanna just sit, you can, um, you know, go get a snack right now, go get a drink of water, make a funny face at me, um, but I'm gonna take some stretch time and stretch over my head. Do the other side. I'm gonna turn in my chair. Ooh, that feels good. Turn the other way. And then I'm gonna just shake it out. All right. It began with a page, bright and beckoning. It began with a mother writing a poem and a father working a field and a little girl named Gyo drawing a picture. It was 1913 and Gyo was five years old. So there she is drawing a son. Her mom is writing a poem. So her family was artistic and her mother was a poet. That morning, her mama said, Oh, hi, oh, sleepyhead. It's going to be a busy day. And it was. Can you see all those activities? She's playing with her sibling, getting dressed. They're playing dress up. She's drawing, looking at books, picking up her sibling. Looks like she was a really great big sister. And I bet a lot of you are really great siblings as well. Right until nightfall, Mama's friends had come and they were full of talk. We sailed to America with our best kimono to see what we could be. Such disappointment. We need the vote. We need rights. Gyo held her rice bowl and listened with curious ears. Did Gyo know what she wanted to be? Not yet. So it looks like Gyo's mother and her friends we're really thinking and talking about how to get better treatment and more rights for themselves and for their community. What she did know was that she liked to draw. She loved the feel of the pencil in her hand, the dance and glide of a line, how a new color could change everything, 
a bright splash of yellow, a sleepy stroke of blue. Shout out your favorite color. Oh, I heard blue, I heard red, I heard yellow, I heard pink, I heard purple, a couple oranges, black, yeah. Somebody said rainbow, that's my kid's favorite color, rainbow. All right, every day she started with an empty white page and filled it with pictures. At home, surrounded by drawing tools and books, anything was possible. But at school, Gil didn't feel that way. At school, no one said, that girl sure can draw. No one noticed her colored pencils or box of paints. No one even noticed when she moved away. How do you think Gil was feeling at this school? I heard lonely, sad, left out. Yeah, and I think maybe you also noticed, and I noticed this too, that the kids here in this part of the book look pretty different from Gil. So perhaps she was one of the only Japanese American students in her school, and that probably did feel lonely. Gil's new home was a fishing village near San Pedro, California a haven for Japanese Americans. A new life, roaming with her friends, Gyo felt weightless and free. What do you love to do with your friends? I heard playing tag, going to the park, <laughs> playing video games, yep. Building, playing dress up. Those are some of the things my toddler likes to do, to do as well. A fairy ride away at her high school. Okay, so we've jumped in time now. Okay, so Gyo's a little bit older. She's high school age. A fairy ride away at her high school. Gyo sometimes still felt invisible among her mostly white classmates. Hmm. So it seems like back at this school, her classmates were probably mostly white and still in high school, her classmates are mostly white. So she feels different. Seems like she's alone. A fairy ride away at her high school, Gil sometimes still felt invisible among her mostly white classmates. But her drawings caught the attention of two teachers. Who was this girl whose eyes missed nothing? Who could sketch rivers and boats and birds like a dream? Miss Cole and Miss Blum saw the energy in each line of her drawings. Gil was too poor to go to art school, but Miss Cole found money to pay her way. So she really had an ally in her teachers. She had her teachers who believed in her and Miss Cole was really an ally and helped her go to art school. Gyo was nervous to leave her home for the buzz and bustle of downtown Los Angeles. Not many girls and even fewer Asian American girls went to college in 1926. But Gyo was determined she sketched statues, flowers, and faces. Her sketchbooks filled up one after another. Wow, so she's still maybe feeling a little bit lonely. Here she is separated from the other students who look perhaps mostly white, mostly men. She was one of the only women and one of the only Asian American students. And she was still so determined. What a brave person. But the teacher, oh, whoops. Hungry to know more, Gyo set off for Japan, the land of her ancestors, to study traditional Japanese brush painting. But the teachers were full of rules. And kind of seems like Gyo didn't always love to follow the rules, right? So instead, she traveled around the country doing her own learning. Woodblocks, carving, tools, inks made of soot. She lost herself in the prints of Hiroshige, Utamaro, and Hokusai. and floated in a beautiful sea of kimono. Have any of you worn kimono before? Or maybe yukata for obon? I'm seeing some head nodding.
travel fed her dreams, but back in America, it was time to earn money. For the next few years, Gyo worked long days painting murals and drawing for magazines. In 1941, she was offered a temporary job designing books at Walt Disney Studio in New York, a city filled with art and artists. It was hard for Gyo to leave her family, especially her mother. Little did she know things were about to get harder still. So here she is working for Disney, painting that mural. And she was really talented. In early 1942, terrible things were happening. Bombs and gunfire rocked the world. America was at war with Japan. What was the name of this war again? Yep, World War II, you remembered. Gyo was shocked to discover that anyone who looked Japanese or had a Japanese name was now suspected of being the enemy. And what did we call that? Do you remember that word we were just practicing before? When people are being un treated unfairly because of where their ancestors come from or how they look? Yeah, racism. So she was experiencing racism and so was her family and many, many, many other Japanese heritage people. Japanese Americans living on the West Coast were ordered to leave their homes, their schools, their pets, their everything. And like we talked about before we started the book, Gyo's family only had two days, 48 hours, before they were forced to leave. Gyo, along with others living on the East Coast, was told to stay where she was. On the West Coast, families preparing to leave tried to sell their larger belongings, like cars and furniture, to junk dealers. But they were offered only pennies. I won't sell, said Gyo's mother, you. Instead, she set everything ablaze. If you have a grown-up with you, maybe talk to your grown-up about why would you, Gyo's mother, choose to burn their belongings? Maybe do a turn and talk if you have a, a caregiver, a grown up with you. How do you think she felt? Angry, upset, betrayed. Okay. So Gyo's family was sent to a prison camp far, far away from their home. Gyo's heart was broken. And we talked about earlier how even though Gyo was not imprisoned in these prison camps during World War II, and she was told to stay put on the East Coast, it really broke her heart. It was very painful for her. For the next three years, the world shrank, became tiny and terrible. Now, when she gazed at a white page, no pictures would come. Gyo mailed her family letters and sent gifts for her new nephew, born in the camp. But her heart would not mend. So Gyo had a brother, and um, that brother was also forced to be in this prison camp. And she had a nephew who she wasn't able to meet because he was born in the prison camp. Eventually, Gyo began to draw again. She drew to keep her worries still and to save money her family would need. When angry strangers saw her as the enemy, drawing comforted her. Why would angry strangers call her the enemy? What's that word again? Yeah, because of racism. Yeah, treating her unfairly just because of the way she looked and where her ancestors came from. When the world felt gray, color lifted her. She wondered, could art comfort and lift others too? What do you notice about this page? And let me see if I can show you a little bit better. What do you notice about the colors? Everything is gray, dark colors, big white space. And then Gyo's umbrella has some rainbow colors. Hmm. With no house or savings to call their own. Oh, I keep doing that. Whoops, it starts up here. 
When the war ended, the Fujikawas were released. With no house or savings to call their own, they had to start again. For Gyo, the next 15 years passed swiftly. There were stamps to create, store windows to decorate, a children's book of poetry to illustrate. There were two poodles who needed loving. Do any of you have pets? Yeah, what are they? Oh, cats, dogs, fish. Oh, somebody has a rabbit, okay. Now when Gyo walked her, oh, okay, yep, somebody's so chickens, some of you have chickens. All right, thank you. Uh, now when Gyo walked around the city collecting ideas for her pictures, she began to notice little changes around her. I'm gonna read some of these signs to you so you can know what they say, because it's a little hard to see. It says, we support Southern sit-ins. Segregation is morally wrong. We walk for humanity. And segregation now. So this was at a time when a lot of people were starting to be involved in the civil rights movement and demanding that laws change, uh, that black people and people of color be treated more fairly. And Gyo was witnessing that. Still, there was so much that hadn't changed at the library and bookshop, it was the same old stories, mothers in aprons and fathers with pipes and a world of only white children. Yo knew a book could hold more and do more. A book, she told her poodles, can be anything that anyone imagines it to be. Yo knew what she wanted to do. Every day she started with an empty page and filled it with pictures and words. When her book was done, she gave it to a publisher. And what did they see? <sighs> what do you think they saw? I'm hearing rainbows. I'm hearing poodles. Maybe the maybe there were poodles in the book. Let's see. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Wow! Babies, chubby cheeks, squat legged, bouncy bottom babies, naughty nice, oh so busy, toddle crawling babies. But the publisher said no. No to mixing white babies and black babies. It was not done in early 1960s America, a country with laws that separated people by skin color. Separated people by skin color. That was a word that was on one of these signs before. Segregation is separation of people based on their skin color and where their ancestors come from. But Gyo would not budge. And we've talked about, she didn't really like to follow the rules. She was a very determined person. So she closed her eyes and remembered all the times she had felt unseen and unwelcome. She looked the publisher in the eye and said, it shouldn't be that way. Not out there in the streets, not here in this page. We need to break the rules. And sometimes it's important to break the rules because sometimes the rules are not fair. When she waited for them to rethink their decision, the babies waited too and waited. But babies cannot wait. And those of you who've spent time around babies, you know babies are not patient. Finally, the publisher said yes, and the book did well, very well. Babies loved it. So Gyo kept going, welcoming kids in from the edges, from the corners, from the shadows. Gyo let each child find a place. Girls and boys freed from pink or blue, sharing jokes, joys, mishaps, bruises, all sprawling out across the bright page, ready for a bigger, better world.
So Gyo knew that people were ready for a bigger, better world. So I'm going to invite you to do two different art activities. The first one is to create a collage where you imagine a bigger, better world. What would your world look like and include? And what we're gonna do is a little bit different right now. So the second invitation is to do an art activity called a mind map. Because when I'm reading books, especially books like a, dun dun dun, that word again, biography, I like to remember what I've learned about the person. So a mind map is a way to take notes and draw so that you remember important things about the person or the topic you just learned about. So I wrote here Gyo Fujikawa 1908 through 1998. I wrote Japanese American artist. And I'm gonna just draw things that help me remember. So whatever you draw or write is to help you remember. So I'm gonna invite you to get a paper, a pencil or pen or paints, whatever you like to create art with. I'm gonna give you about five counts to do that. Let's do it in Japanese together. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. Okay, I hope you have your art materials. And I'm going to just do my best. I like to make art with my four-year-old, but I don't necessarily consider myself a great professional artist, so I'm just going to do my best. I wanted to draw a picture of Gyo's um, face as the centerpiece, and I'm doing, uh, I really liked her uh, beret as an artist. I thought that was a neat look. So I'm going to draw her with the beret. And just doing a simple face. Uh, just to remind me a little bit of what she looked like. Nothing too fancy. Um, so around her portrait, I'm gonna do some notes. So she was born in Berkeley. So I'm gonna write born in Berkeley, California. And I'm actually gonna attempt to do the shape of California. <laughs> It actually kind of looks like a sock, but I know for me, that's the state of California. So again, this is just for you to help you remember. Um, another thing I remember from her childhood was she always loved to draw. So I'm gonna have a little sketch of a pencil here. Maybe have, I remember she had that sun picture in the beginning of the story. So I'm gonna do that right there to remind me of how much she loved to draw as a child. And I'm also remembering from the story when she was younger, she really felt invisible and unwelcome. And that was an experience that continued to happen to her. So I'm gonna do a little sketch of her as a young person, she had that big bow on her head. And I'm giving her a frowny face. And I'm gonna write the words uh, invisible. Okay, and um, felt unwelcome. To help me remember that part of her story. Now, what else do you wanna add? What else would be a good thing to add to our mind map? Okay, so I heard some people say she worked in uh, New York for Disney. That's helpful. So I'm gonna put some 
mouse ears. Okay, I'm gonna write Disney there to remind me that she worked for Disney. And I'm going to, oh, I heard um, the prison camps that her family went to. So I'm going to do my best to draw some um, of the barracks and uh, there was barbed wire. So I'm gonna put the barbed wire there and I'm gonna write a note that her family was imprisoned. And what else should we put? What else is important to remember? Oh, I heard somebody say the poodles. She had two poodles. So she never had children of her own, but she had these two poodles that she loved. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's see. And have these kind of curly fur. Uh, do the second poodle. I don't know that the book tells us their names. I'm kind of curious what their names were. Okay, so she she really loved those two poodles. And I'm just gonna write two poodles here. Because my drawings are fast, they're not super neat. So just to label what my drawings are. And uh, what else should we put? Yes, okay, let's draw. Let's see, I'm gonna put in here uh, her book, right? Her baby's book. That's a great idea, okay. And I'm gonna write the word babies there. And there's a little baby smiley face on there. So it's really simple, not too fancy, but when we do mind maps, it helps us to remember. So. I invite you to do this activity or the other activity I mentioned, which was to make a collage or a painting, imagining what a bigger, better world would look like to you and your family. And for the grown-ups and caregivers, if you are interested in more activities to do with your family, I invite you to check out our website www.studyforsolidarity.org slash families and kids and we have other videos and activities and downloadable uh, pieces for your family to explore and enjoy. Thank you so much for being here. It's been really wonderful to hang out. I hope you had fun. I had a lot of fun and I'm wishing you a really wonderful, joyful rest of your day. Bye.